Most people believe this is true. Thought comes before action. For us to do something, we have to think it first. After all, everything starts in the mind, right? Even if you don't consciously think of the thing we do, it's the thought in the brain that instructs the body to act. But do you agree though? Do you think it's true? Most people will say yes, but guess what? It's not always true. Thought doesn't always come before action. Because sometimes, thought follows actions, not lead them. The body often dictates what the mind thinks. We do first and only think later, sometimes much later. Interesting, yes? And guess what? We can use this insight to help us to be better in persuading and influencing others. Inside the Anzai Protocol, I teach a technique I call the MFB, short for Mind Follows the Body. What makes the MFB interesting is because it's the opposite of what most people believe. And what do people believe? They believe they are 100% in control of their actions. They believe that everything they do is from careful and conscious thought. And yet most of the time, people don't know why they do the things they do. In fact, psychologists tell us that the typical life of humans is like a series of dreams. They drift from one mental state to the next, floating from one thought to another, day after day. They seem to be in an unbroken chain of hypnotic trance all their lives. Derek Ray calls this perpetual trance. Most people are unaware, but they are trapped in a trance that hypnotizes them forever. Interesting, right? Yes, but how is this knowledge useful? Well, this is how. To make anyone obey you, there are just two steps to take. First, you want him out of his perpetual trance, and second, you get him into one that you control. In other words, you want him to be in a perpetual trance that you control. When he's under your trance, you can ask him to do anything and he'll obey. And as long as you control his trance, he's subservient to you. How does that sound? I mean, imagine having the power of putting anyone under trance and he won't even know it. What are you going to do with that power? So here's what you're going to learn next. You'll discover the mind follows the body technique, or as the Anzayans call it, the MFB. There are two ways to put someone under trance, and I'm going to teach you both. Before that, however, do something for me. Help me out by clicking like so more guys like you get to see this video. So go on, pause, and click like now. Done? Good job. Let's continue. The first step in the MFB is to snap your mark out of his perpetual trance. And there are two ways to do this. One, you can use a direct verbal command. A simple example would be to say to your mark directly, wake up. And maybe, like a stage hypnotist, you can snap your fingers at his face for added effect. Or two, you can use a behavioral command. A behavioral command is one that gets your mark to do something. If he's sitting down, get him to stand. If he's standing, get him to walk. If he's walking, get him to run. Okay, so here's a question for you. Which of these two are more effective, you think? A verbal command or a behavioral command? Tell you what, take a moment to think and then enter your answer in the comment section below. Simply enter A for verbal command or B for behavioral command. Which do you think is more important? Verbal command A or behavioral command B? Pause the video and enter your answer. Go! If you have entered B, then well done. That's the correct answer. The most effective way to snap your mark out of his perpetual trance is to make him do something. Why? Recall what we talked earlier about the mind and the body. The question is, does the body follow the mind or the mind follows the body? Classical or Chaldean persuasion works on the idea that the body follows the mind. Chaldean persuasion is all about changing minds. A person's behavior is controlled by his mind, right? So when he changes his mind, he will then behave the way you want him to. That's how the theory goes anyway. That sounds straightforward, right? But let's consider the opposite. Let's assume the other hypothesis that the mind follows the body is true. How are things different then? Well, this is how. To make someone accept an idea, get him to first act on the idea. When you involve your mark to work towards a certain goal, you force him to believe in that goal. Every small step he takes towards the goal reinforces his belief in it. 
and every action forms a ritual that further strengthens his conviction in the idea. Why does this work? Well, it has got to do with a particular weakness in the human mind. It's the inability to tolerate any inconsistency between our thoughts and actions. After all, we will never willingly act against what we believe in, right? Our actions are always consistent with our beliefs, at least in our minds. And so, if you can get your mark to act on something, guess what? He will back rationalize his action into beliefs that are consistent with his action. And that's not all. Every small positive action adds up. The more he acts on your requests, the more agreeable and compliant he'll be. Make sense? Now with this in mind, let's go through a real life example. A few years ago, I had to deal with a difficult co-worker. I won't dox him, so I'll call him Peter. Peter was an old guy of sorts, having been around since the early days of the company. He was a real pain to work with, and yet the boss trusted him, and so he became his unofficial gatekeeper. Nothing goes through to the boss unless Pricky Pete approves. So there was this proposal I was working on and I knew what I had to do. I had to get Peter on my side. So what did I do? I inserted a few mistakes into the proposal on purpose. I then printed it out and took it to him. And as expected, he took out his red marker and corrected my mistakes. And it was done. I asked him, Peter, when do you think we should present our proposal to the boss? The act of correcting the copy was small and yet it involved him. At the end, he felt he had a stake in the proposal. It wasn't just my proposal anymore, it was ours. And guess what? The proposal went through and got approved without a hitch. So here's what I want you to take away from all this. The mind always follows the body. Get your mark to perform a positive action and you'll direct his thoughts to where you want them to be. Because when he's acting in agreement with you, he must, therefore, agree with you in thought. The human brain is a powerful, self-justifying machine. And that's not all. This is also a shortcut to make someone like you almost immediately. Here's how that works. When you meet someone for the first time, find an opportunity to get him to do you a small favor. As he performs the favor, his subconscious mind will register you as a person he likes. After all, we only do favors for the people we like, right? The mind follows the body. To make someone like you, get him to do things for you. Because the more you get your mark to do favors for you, the more he will like you and the more compliant he'll be. And guess what? You can take one step further and indoctrinate him. Because unlike conventional persuasion, indoctrination is forever. Look at cults and religions. If you've got your followers in a cult, you don't need to persuade them for anything, do you? They'll love you for who you are and obey everything you say without question. Now understand this, you don't have to use this knowledge for nefarious purposes. Like the rest of us, you can choose to use this power for good. All I'm offering you is a choice, and choices are always good. So here's the deal. You now have three options. 1. Do nothing and continue as before. Nothing changes and you live your life as it is. 2. Read conventional persuasion books and learn stale, overused tricks. You're not getting anywhere, but you don't know why. Or 3. Embrace your dark side and jump into the indoctrination rabbit hole. If the third option is what you choose, here's what to do next. I've written a book about indoctrination and I want to give it to you. It's called the dark lever, and the premise is simple. Human relationships operate on invisible levers. A man is powerful when he has leverage over other men. A man is weak when other men has leverage over him. This book shows you how to cast a lever on another man so you have power over him. Now here's the thing. I want to give you the book for free, but it comes with a catch. Because of the nature of this knowledge, I don't want people to use it to cause harm. It's important to me it doesn't fall into the wrong hands. So you can have the book, but only if you pass a simple test. It's a quiz that takes about 2 minutes to complete. After the quiz, I'll tell you if you're suitable for the dark lever. And if you are, I will email you the book. To take the test, go to the following site, darklever.com. There, take the quiz and follow the instructions. Again, remember, 
Not everyone qualifies. But if you do, you belong to a rare group who gets to enjoy these little known secrets of social power. Go on and take the test at dartlever.com. Do it now.